Well, hello there, domain name people. It is February 2021, and we are proud to be launching our very first interview on our video blog here at IQ. Today, we're going to talk about domain name abuse, the challenges of handling it, how we pick our abuse feeds. And we're going to talk about that and a few other things with our CTO, Mr. LG Forsberg, live from Sweden. So let's get going. Well, hello there, everyone. I'm Pinky Brand with IQ, and welcome to our first video blog. This is intended to be a series of video blogs over time, hopefully, that will include lots of interesting people and interesting topics uh, for you to uh, review and continue on the conversation within our industry. My colleague I would like to introduce to you today is uh, LG, and LG is, is our CTO, and he's based in Sweden. Welcome, LG. Thank you, Pinky. It's uh, incredibly nice to be here. Um, thank you for inviting me to be the first. <laughs> well, of course. Um, and yeah, tell us a little bit about your, your background and um, you know, how you got into this industry and so forth. Yes, I've actually just celebrated 20 years in the domain name industry. And I started out in the early 2000, uh, 2000s at a registrar in Sweden called Lupia. Uh, today, they're Sweden's largest registrar and uh, span many more countries than just Sweden. Uh, but uh, I left them around uh, 2010 to go work in the uh, TLD on the TLD side of the business. So since then, uh, I have worked with uh, .nu, uh, which means now in Swedish. So it's a kind of a new GTLD sp style spin on something that is much older than that. And I've also worked with the Swedish registry uh, on the .se top level domain name. Uh, uh, I have also before joining IQ, I founded and uh, run uh, Nordic Domain Days, uh, which is currently on a bit of a COVID hiatus, but we and I look very much forward to doing that again in the future. Since uh, about a year now, I am the CTO at IQ and work with you and the other guys. You know, the, you've mentioned Nordic Domain Days and I, I'm you know definitely aware of that. And it's a really a shame that we have not been able to all get together this year and sit down and talk shop talk about, you know, topics that are interesting um, to us and also, you know, just for, you know, business purposes, of course. But, um, you know, one of those things is abuse. And, you know, you um, have done quite a bit on the abuse side here at IQ since uh, you've come aboard. What do you find being really the biggest challenges of anyone trying to tackle domain name abuse in your experience? Um, well, uh, as, I'm, as I have mentioned, uh, I have a, a history with conferences and I've, I actually started traveling in work and going to conferences uh, back in 2004. Um, that was a RIPE conference, a very technical conference in the, the heart of Europe in Amsterdam. Um, and at that very conference, I was actually approached to uh, discuss abuse of domain names for the first time outside of, of the office, of course. Yeah. And since then, I've, I've um, been on one or another project that has to do with the abuse of domain names. It could, it could have been more on the security side with DNSSEC. It uh, has been on more of the policy side as well. But I find that the hardest thing everyone has is getting on the same page, realizing that we all have to work together uh, it's not one single responsibility to deal with abuse. Uh, the, the registry, of course, needs to do what they can do um, to combat this, uh, to combat abuse of different sorts. Uh, the registrar and uh, the hosting company, every part of the, 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 the internet industry needs to uh, do their part. And I think that's the, that's the problem. We're getting to that realization and building the tools and channels to work together on combating the problem as a whole and not just as a single part. One of the things that 
comes around on that is, and when I'm talking to folks, is dealing with, you know, the different reputation block list and the uh, the different uh, places where you can find reports on domain name abuse. How do you, maybe you can tell our viewers, because this is a question I get a lot is, you know, how do we decide on which ones to use in, in our system, for example? Um, it's a good question. Uh, we have about, at any given time, we have about 10 to 12 block lists. And this might seem a lot, or it might seem little, because uh, we have um, uh, reviewed over 200 different block lists out there. And we have only implemented the ones that we feel uh, live up to a certain standard. And uh, these standards, uh, of course, you have fault the a rate of fault false positives so how how many of the reports in a block list are actually can we actually confirm our abusive behavior um there are uh, variables such as okay overlap between um two two rbls um if they are actually almost the same then are they copies would we introduce a lot of um, the same report from the same person further down the line by having these two sources? Um, there's also a lot of actual um, manual checking of the reports and uh, what the actual what what the source is. Why is this uh, report here? Why do this report uh, provider believe that it is abuse? Um, and we do this uh, scrutinization of the block lists on an ongoing basis, not just uh, when we take on new block lists. Um, yeah, other things that we look into, of course, we uh, today we have a certain amount of categories that we uh, monitor with abuse manager. Mm -hmm. uh, the most common be uh, the most common being phishing, malware. Uh, um, we also have spam lists. Uh, we have um, lists that include uh, command and control, uh, botnet, uh, domain names. Um, and having a good coverage of the different kinds of abuse that we see today is also something we're very important. Uh, we only recently in uh, uh, late last fall actually added a, um, a not a reputation block list, but a provider called Scam Advisor to our service, which um, actually uh, uses online indicators to rate and score a domain name if it's likely to be a scam or not. So this is very different from, for example, um, Anti-Phishing Working Group, which is one of our uh, other sources, which uh, treats, uh, which collects reports on phishing, specifically uh, content-based abuse uh, of domain names. Um, as of Scam Advisor actually going out there, making an, an active scan, looking through online sources and collecting material to do an assessment. Um, so it's, uh, it's not just Every, every um, your reputation block list is not the same. Right. So for example, is that, is that uh, like finding fake, uh, like fake web shops? Yes, that is definitely something. Fake web, fake web shops, um, any kind of site where uh, the, uh, the site is actually not what it seems like to be. Uh, there's a lot of, uh, for, um, counterfeit ticket products. There is a lot of, of course, uh, uh, fraudulent websites um, and all they try to combat uh, all of those different kinds of abuse. Yeah, yeah. And over, I, I know originally, you know, when, when this, we developed the service uh, for abuse, uh, it was uh, originally intended to uh, monitor a specific TLD uh, to adhere to ICANN spec 11 3B. Um, which is required of all the new generic top level domains. And, but since then um, the product has evolved uh, so that registrars can also use it in the spirit of, it takes more than just one aspect of the industry to fight domain name abuse. Um, perhaps you could elaborate a little bit on that and how that tool is um, uh, 
now being used by registrars and also whether or not a registrar should or needs to be monitoring all the domain names that they have under their management. Yeah, uh, as you mentioned, Abuse Manager was built to help uh, monitor a specific TLD, which is fairly simple. You can uh, basically just look at all of the rep reports of abuse that you can find. And if they are of the right TLD, then it's a hit, it's a, it's a match. Um, uh, and we uh, did a lot of work on this last year of diversifying how you can use our service to monitor the domain name space that you uh, manage. Um, and so you have the TLD side where you have a specific TLD and we can find all of the views under that. Uh, for registrars, um, it's more they upload a list or give us a list of the domain names that they currently have on the management. And we monitor those domain names uh, for them. And if the entire domain name shows up in the report, then they get a match. Um, so it's not based on the TLD anymore. Uh, along with this, we also opened up for the registrars to have resellers because as many of you know, uh, the, we have uh, quite a few big uh, registrars out there was which primarily deals and sells domain names through resellers. Uh, so these registrars can actually upload a list of domain names with the reseller name and thus both themselves see which reseller the domain name that has a, a, an abuse report is connected to, but also offer that reseller a, a, a login to log into our system and see the, the abuse report or reports that they have. Um, as for the um, what domain names a registrar or a TLD or anyone should really scan, we see that uh, you could think that mainly new domain names are registered to be used for abuse. Uh, and this is, of course, the case. The most abuse that we see are on domain names that are less than a year old. However, uh, in, uh, test, uh, in, in lookups and tests that we and research that we have done, we see that domain names as old as 20 years also have abuse. Um, they might have a, an old installation of a, a publishing software that gets hacked and they get malware uh, pushed to their site. There's a lot of different types of abuse that where the, uh, the person that wants to spread this uh, malware, this, this this bit of phishing site uh, code uh, doesn't really register the domain name, but actually uses someone else's domain name. Uh, so for me, I would always recommend everyone to, with a large holding of domain names, to uh, monitor and scan them all for, uh, for abusive behavior. Um, the last thing I want to bring up is that uh, we are actively looking at different ways of enabling our customers to monitor their domain space. So right now we have the, the TLD way where you can give us our zone, your zone file or we can look at your TLD and match. We have the registrar way, which is uploading a list. Uh, we are also looking into um, um, enabling brands to uh, ma monitor uh, for abuse on domain names related to their brand in some way. We're uh, looking into opening up the service to a whole host of other uh, interested parties as well in different ways of using the abuse manager. Yeah, um, thanks for those comments. I think uh, that's one thing I've noticed is surprisingly is the amount of abuse on domains that are really old going back to the 1990s and not spam, but, you know, phishing, you know, or, or malware and that sort of thing to your point. So I, I can see from a brand perspective, um, myself having uh, having a company in the past that uh, helped uh, companies manage their very large domain name portfolios. Uh, even these these large brands, or even a, even a medium sized company, may have domains that are compromised and they're just completely unaware of it. Yeah. Um, this our service originally, I mean, uh, it's a software as a service, but uh, we also have an API. Uh, perhaps you could elaborate uh, on the API. Yeah, um, so our traditional IQ abuse manager service uh, works uh, similarly to a 
a CRM system uh, where you log in, you'll have all of your reports uh, bundled into cases. So if a uh, domain name has more than more more than one report, it will only wet, get one case and you can see both of the reports in that. This is a, uh, and you also get it with statistics. You can see how the fact that you're using IQ Abuse Manager is affecting uh, the amount of abuse cases and reports that you see uh, goes on over time. Uh, so there's, there's some cool benefits of using the UI, but it's not for everyone. Uh, so we, of course, have an API to access uh, abuse manager data uh, where you can get uh, reports and cases from the domain names that you have, that you scan through us. This could either be used to actually integrate abuse manager into your own uh, uh, registrar portal or your, your end user portal if you're a registrar and allow your your uh, resellers or customers to view the fact that they have an abuse report. It could be used to collect statistics. Uh, there's a whole host of reasons for why uh, our API is a quite powerful tool. And uh, another thing that we're looking into is actually offering um, a more of a data access where we would offer um, our, our customer access to the actual feed that we build. Because one of the most important features and one of the most powerful features of IQ Abuse Manager is that through these um, sources that we um, collect and uh, um, look at, we have at any given time uh, uh, between two and three million reports of abuse on unique on different domain names. This is... Uh, from what I have been able to tell, one of the largest sources of this kind of information out there today. So we want to enable access to that in the future. It's not in a, a service that we are completely done with or that's out there today, but if, if you're interested, you should definitely talk to us about it. Do you see uh, any other uh, potential enhancements uh, that we can discuss here uh, to the system? <laughs> well, well, um, one thing that's very important to know about IQ when you go in and become a customer of IQ is that we're 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 a a small sized SaaS company. Um, we have built the products that we offer from the ground up. Uh, we are com in complete control of the source code. We are uh, able to modify it and, and build what our customer needs, and it's all based on cloud technology, which is scalable in, in on every axis. Um, so if you would, if a customer of ours would try the abuse manager and have a feature that they miss, or if they would try one of our other services like analytics and see that there's something that they miss, we are always open to talking to them. We're always opening, open to improving on, uh, on our products because our customers need it. It's, um, really one of the quite unique features that made me want to work with IQ. Thank you, LG. I think we've pretty much run out of time for this first episode. We do offer a free trial to any registry or registrar. If you are interested in a free trial, just contact me on the screen and we'll get that going for you lickety split. Uh, thank you, LG. Um, one quick question. What, um, are there any plans maybe to get Nordic Domain Days online this year or in physical form this year? Just curious. Uh, I was I was really hoping to be able to do a physical meetup with a physical Nordic Domain Days later this year. Right now it's look, looking pretty grim, uh, but as the people that get the newsletter from Nordic Domain Days know, um, the Nordic Domain Days is a social uh basically a social club like uh, so much of the value in the, in the conference that i put on is in meeting and interacting with people so even though i know that uh, the big names the names cons and and the world hosting day that cloud fest is going online um i think that nordic domain days is going to stay a physical conference even if it takes more time before we can do it well as soon as um as soon as we are all able, I can guarantee you I would be on a plane to attend um, because 
I think many of us in this industry are social animals and uh, our industry is sort of kind of, you know, close knit over the years, but there are new people that are coming in all the time. So I think it'd be just fantastic. I'm definitely looking forward to that at some point, but thanks yeah. a lot, um, for your time today, LG. I uh, just want to let everyone know, um, just you can subscribe here if you want to uh, get uh, notified about future uh, episodes. But in the meantime, just stay tuned uh, to our Twitter channel or our LinkedIn feeds to find out about uh, content for the next episode. And we'll see you then. Thank you.